up? What's up, everybody? What's, What's up? Good? What's good? Hold on, Mr. I'm Poetic. And I'm Mr. M2J. Welcome back to the fourth episode, I believe, of the Latinos on Filter podcast, where we kick back, sip a cafecito or a rum. I actually have a little bit of rum with me right now, and dive into the heart of it all. From the rhythm of our favorite Latino beats to the real talk about what's shaking our community. We are here to keep it sin filtro, mi gente. No hold it back. That's right. That's right. So whether you're chilling at home or stuck in traffic or maybe you're going out to eat or you're at the library, wherever you're at, and you decide, you know what, let me listen to these guys because they're pretty awesome. Join yeah. our familia. Let's laugh, learn, and maybe even spill a little cheese along the way. You know, sip a little bit of that tea because life's definitely too short to not have a good time. So grab any type of headphones you got on available, bro. Headphones, anything. Yo, turn on the volume and sit down because we are about to get on filter. Bienvenidos to this vibrant world of Latinos on filter. Let's Latinos go. Latinos sin filtro. Let's so how go. you doing today? How are you doing? Man, long, long, yeah. long day, bro. Long Crazy. day. Crazy. A lot of traffic. Yeah, it was a bad accident going on, covering both sides of the road. Man, when I'm telling you, it's stuck in traffic after driving all day, that's no fun. <laughs> no fun. It's the, the life of Floridians. Yeah, yep. They don't know how to use turn signals. You know, it, it's just crazy. The, the, the way they drive down here, you have to be a mind reader. Facts, that's my microphone, y'all. Um, okay, so... What, what what do you have for what do you have for a topic today? What do you have? What do you have? Well, eh, today I mean I, I I had a couple couple of stuff that I want to probably just talk about. You know, it, yeah. it varies from like different stuff, from relationships, you know, dating stuff, whatever. Not that you know, a little bit of some stuff. See what okay. our viewers got to you know, they, they what what they think about it while we put our own spin into what we're about to talk about. So, you know, dive in a little bit into it. Um, my first question into this comes from it says how far into a relationship do you think it's okay to move in together oh yeah now this person wrote and it says we have almost been together for two years i recently have i have been thinking about wanting to take it to the next step and get a place together once i get debt free this year what are your thoughts Huh. Um, honestly, it just depends. I feel like me personally, I feel like it should take quite a bit before you move in. Honestly, personally, I mean, you can move in at any time, but moving in too quick, I feel like it's too much, especially because like, if you don't know the person that well, moving in with someone is a whole different thing compared to dating and having that person over sometimes because it, it, it's a whole different lifestyle and you learn that quickly because um, you don't know, you know, you, you see them every now and then, even if you spend a lot of time with them, I can live with them. It's easy. We spend pretty much 24 seven, but living with someone when you're not trying to spend time with each other is completely different from, from where you're living with them. And then it's like, when you're not spending time with each other, it's like, it's not like you can be like, Oh, I'm gonna go back to my own place. It's one of those where you're kind of like, okay, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, leave because i'm not in the mood no now it's like okay what part of the house are you going to <laughs> you know what I'm so it's like what can you do i personally would say for me personally i always tell people i personally think a, a six months to a year i would even say six months minimum just because you want to get to know the person to begin with and if it's still doing well and you're doing pretty good after you know within six months then i say you know if you want to move in together you know you can do that but i feel like um Anything before that's kind of sudden. Even then, I would say a year because six months, you can get to know people, but you're still in that, like, lovey-dovey phase. Yeah. And, yeah. like, a year, you'll really know how you feel about someone. You'll know a lot about them because, you know, guys, it, it's fact, but we play the long game. I, <laughs> I, think, long I think we, in general, have, we have kind of, like, make it into a rush game, if anything. Because even then, six months to a year, to me personally, in retrospect, I think that's too fast. Yeah, I was. I would say. I would say, and I, and I might sound crazy, but I think five years. You know why I say that? Because after that, you kind of get out of the whole like honeymoon phase, and Ooh. you kind of start realizing, like, 
more the kinks and quirks of each other. Because this is what happened, you know, and and this is one of five the years though. That's a yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think can see a year or two, but five years. Your your because it, this is this is what I get at. Because people, let's say you go move in six months to a year, and literally most of the time that people do that, they, that's where all problems start. Because you have a set, a, like a set things that you do in your own place that to your personal standards. That is perfectly fine, but yeah. next, but then to the other person, it be like that's unacceptable, and that automatically creates conflict. And then they start with the little problems, and they think at the beginning is cute, and then like a week later, they're like, okay, he keeps doing it. And then for the most part, True. people think that we are mind readers, so they don't come straight and say it. Then they made them them cute little suggestions and hints there and hints there. And then we just keep going because that's our vibe. That's our routine. That's something that we normalize that they are really uncomfortable with. And it creates a, like, like friction, you know? So yeah. I think that at that point in time, like five years, I think it give you plenty of times to have conversations about all different things about your own personal life, anywhere from what you like to do when you're down, what you do when you're happy, you know, uh, how you see, you know, like you have time to ask all the important questions, you know, how, how do you like to live? How you like to, you know, keep your room, what, you know, this, that you can come visit. Yeah. Each other. Because the thing about it is that most of the time when people date and they see each other's place, they usually clean it before they, they get in there. Now, yeah. now let's be honest. On your regular day-to-day -day basis, most times we just leave things hanging around until we, we get when we get there. You know, like we get to that. Yeah. <laughs> so now when you're living together, you automatically, like you're going to clean up for a little bit, but then after that, you're going to start getting comfortable into like your own little routine back at your place, you know, whether yeah. you live in your place or you or, or they move into your place. They start getting in, back into like that lax mode. Like, okay, I'm going to start doing me again and I'm going to sit down and start playing my games or I'm going to sit down and start uh, binging movies on Netflix and da-da-da-da-da. And then the other person really don't know about all those little tiny Work. details that <laughs> might just, like, set the other person off. Like, yeah, hey, uh, I like to leave the milk in the fridge without the cap. You know, like, whatever kind of, kind of crazy shit you might have that, you know. Or, or ask the milk. <laughs> I mean that that's that's an extreme like blasphemy, kind of bro. <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. Like, that, that's that like saying I want to leave the bread out and I'm gonna leave it in a in a tray, which they have bread yeah. trays. But I'm gonna leave the lid off and let the air hit it so it gets bad. That's it's just hard, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, but you'll be surprised the kind of crazy stuff people actually like to do when they're in their own personal little bubble, you know, their own little world type of thing. Yeah, but yeah. It, it just it just gets crazy. It just gets crazy. That's why I feel like if you're spending a lot of time with each other, it depends too, because like I can see more years under the condition that you for one one condition would be if you don't believe in like sex before marriage like if you're if you're religious in some way whether it's christian buddhist whatever it is that you are mm -hmm. um yeah. where you know you don't want to live with each other first because you don't want to you know get tempted and and have sex before that i can see something like that or like you know we'll get we'll get we'll move in together once we get married or something like that um but like or if you're like okay you know you don't really spend 24 7 with each other you spend, you know, maybe two, three times a week, then a few years makes sense because it's going to take you a while to really know that person. If you only spend a few times a week with each other, you can yep. text all you want and video all you want. But if you don't really see each other like that, uh, moving it together so soon, I feel like you definitely don't know, get to know each other. Now, if you're spending, you know, six, five, five to seven days out of the week, um, you know, five days out of the week or, or more with That's that crazy. person. That then I can see. Then I can see days. like a year. <laughs> I've I've seen people. <laughs> then I can then I can see where like you know that I, I that's when I'd be like okay after like a year or two. Actually, I wouldn't say six months. I'd say a year or two. Then I could you know then because you, you got to the point where you really get to know them because yeah. if, especially if they're like listen you know if I have a girl and she's over my house you know five days out of the week and the other two days she might be at hers or whatever then, you know, we're getting to know each other quite a bit. And if she's yeah. sleeping over all the time, then she knows what I do and don't like, and she she can know me. Five years, though, I feel like that's 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 an extended period. Like, at that yeah, point, you should be married. Might, yeah, that, like, like I said, it might sound crazy, but, you know, that's when all the little 
skeletons in the closet start kind of like start coming out if anything yeah. because then you get used to to that you get back into your routine like if you are a person that sit down and game every single night and and she's a person that sits down and read books and you will kind of loud when you play with your homies on the on the game and you be like move the motherfucker you know what i'm saying like you just get yeah. really loud and excited yeah, about yeah. your game and she's on the couch reading a book then she be like bro can you lower your voice like why, why you why you gotta sit down and play this thing every you know like that's one of the main pet peeves for females nowadays it's like why you do this or, like, or a person like me you know i like to play video games and watch anime why you gotta watch them cartoons bro and that's one thing that hurts uh. my life away when you call my anime cartoons because cartoons and anime is different if you want to say something in the comments okay. we're going we gonna beef don't, so don't <laughs> say nothing. Just stay with your comments to yourself. So here's the question: <laughs> Are they are they dolls? Or are they action figures? Oh, don't start! Don't start that. Those <laughs> Barbies are dolls. Okay, Barbies <laughs> are dolls. If you collect your oh action figures from like Marvel, DC, or whatever you know, anime characters, those are action figures. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, holy, holy but, but you know that, and that's why I kind of say five years is is just it gives gives that time. Like it, even when it comes down to like the more serious things, like how you deal with your finances. If you're a person that likes to save, if you're a person that is just wasteful and like to spend a lot of money, because at the end of the day, you can only fake it for so long. And I think that that happens a lot when it comes down to relationships, especially nowadays. Is like. I pretend to be this type of person so I can gain her trust or his trust and, and, yeah. and I can get closer and bonding. But then when you get together and then you see the nitty gritty and that's where like you are a piece of this and you are this and you are a D word and you are F nigga and uh, you know, all this kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? It, it's just, it gets crazy. So you want to give time to time. So all those things come and play along. And then yeah. if, if you guys are really like, okay, I already know everything you got, you know where everything I got. So, you know, it gives time like, okay, well, I spend time at your crib, you spend time on my crib. And and even to the point, like, even if I want to go to your crib, I'm going to come unannounced. If we're dating for like for a year or two, I want to come unannounced. I'm not going to tell you I'm coming. I'm just going to show up. So I don't give you time to clean up your house. So when I knock on the door and you open the door, oh my God, what are you doing here? I'm like, I just came to spend the night, you know, say like, I just missed you, <laughs> you know, you do something cheesy like that. I'm like, I missed you. And then you can kind of like peep games, like how she keeps her house because now she was completely unaware of you coming. So now you can catch her like on her natural habitat kind of thing. And same thing goes vice versa. You just come up and pop up your dude's house and be like, Hey babe, I missed you. And be like, Oh no, I'm on my drawers kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I say, that's why I say five years. It might sound crazy, but, you know, if you really sit back and think about it for a second, it kind of makes sense, the, the, the little things. If you actually want a serious relationship, if you don't, then go ahead and move in today, you know, move in together two days after you meet, and then you'll find out how fun it can be. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I see what you mean. I think five years is still too long, but I feel you on that, though. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to play it on the safe side, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I think we have gone through a lot of, sour relationships at some point in time in life to kind of like sit back think about it for a second like if i were to do that i think i would slap my younger self and be like no stop you're about to fuck up yeah yeah okay so i have a clap back here clap backs for y'all don't know are like quick comebacks that people do when people do stuff so this guy wrote on twitter <laughs> as i'm trying to laugh so this is this is so genius <clears throat> so he says first <laughs> First female to reply with a cash app, I'm blessing them. <laughs> the female, so this girl puts her cash out. Father God, I ask that you bless this young lady's cash app. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, he says. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying not to laugh so hard. He yeah. says. Father God, I ask that you bless this young lady's cash up and wrap it up. I ask that you shine your light and have the eyes on her cash up. Amen. Yeah. Oh, 
I bet you should have expect that. That's the true blessing right oh, there. Oh my gosh. True blessing right there. It's <laughs> like you still yeah. bro, let, let God bless you. <laughs> Your finances. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy! That is crazy. Oh, that is hilarious. Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> I, I know she wasn't expecting that because I was. <laughs> so that that is a ge- that is a genius, bro. That is genius. I know no. she wasn't even thinking about that. Oh my gosh! Oh, that is so good. Okay, so. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have a few more. Let's see. Let's see some funny clapbacks here. I have. So there's there's this. <laughs> that's not bad, but that's not really a good club. But, <laughs> um, I guess we have this one right here. Let me let me pull up another one. I have a few here, y'all. Some of them are. Uh, that was that was great. Um, oh. Someone said, we broke up literally a year ago. Can you please stop playing chess with my dad on Messenger? It's disgusting. Just because I lost the queen doesn't mean I give up the king. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. It's true, though. You built that relationship. What can you do? You get mad about it? I mean, come on now. All right, you're going to be sour and bitter a little bit, but, you know, you got to get get that over your shoulder and keep on moving. Bro. It's, it's relationship. It happens. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. So, um, oh gosh, that's funny. I, people, I love people. Oh, bro, I have to wait a minute. No, 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 no. I, look, I just, I was just checking here and I saw this question right here. Peep this. This is wild. This is wild. Oh, my God. It says, who here ever had his cousins cheat on his, on him with his wife and get her pregnant? I don't really know what to do. Hold on, say that again. Who had have ever had his cousin cheat on him with his wife and get her pregnant? I don't know what to do. What? <laughs> There's a new time to keep it in the Oh my Yo. god. <laughs> what is going on? Bro. That is beat off. May have yo may God have mercy upon your life because this is all the way, bro. All be, the way I, I'm leaving and, and oh, bro. <laughs> bro. I don't know, but I think this would be one of the few very cases that I would go to jail. Like this is beyond me. This bro, is I'd be crazy. Heated. Nah, bro. If that happens. I'm done. I, I'm taking all the money from both. <laughs> both of them, bro. It's a wrap. I'm being petty, bro. I'm going to court, and they're both owing me money at that point. <laughs> that is bro. crazy. That is bro. beyond nuts. That is beyond nuts. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so check this out. This says, here's, <laughs> this is true. It says, uh, isn't the reason why the container is so big is so you can toss them in the sauce? Someone said, I've yet to see instructions saying I have to do so. And then another person put, do you shit your pants because the toilet doesn't have an informational pamphlet? <laughs> oh, stupid. Yo. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Stupid. That's the beauty of the people. So um, I have a little thing here. So we have a little list of questions people want to read for myself on here. Um, we have quite we have uh, quite a quite a really good few things. Hmm. Yo, um, skydiving, like yes. skydiving and bungee jumping. Yeah. I would love to go in to do that. I do, you know, Stacey, you have, I do skydiving before I do bungee jumping. Here's why skydiving, you jump out the plane. If you're going to die, you're going to die. There's no pain. <laughs> 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 right, y'all? Check this out. Now, we're in our 30s. Now, if you're in your 30s or older, you jump from a plane. As long as that parachute opens, you're good. There's no you know, extra pain. If you bungee jump, you have a cord strapped to you. First of all, if the cord's too long or something happens, <laughs> you're, you're hitting hard. If you survive, you're, you're dealing with life. And even if you start, even even if you don't, even if you have a good experience and everything's good, here's a problem. And I know this for a fact. And I know most of y'all will agree with me. If you go bungee jumping, and you're going down. 
now I'm pretty sure they have warnings of all kind of types of, of everything before you go. But like, I'm old. I'm old. I'm 39, bro. I'm hurting my back. I'm, I'm <laughs> tweaking. My, my knee is gonna shoot. I'm, I'm gonna jump, and then you know it's a core that bounces. But I'm the first thing you're gonna hear is my my <laughs> knee or my back knee that come out now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to feel. The, the the pain of like oh I'm aching out because Lord knows once you're in your thirties hey. you're feeling everything and how bungy it is. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens if you actually do it and it just straight like it straightens your spine and it gets you all like decompressed? But here's the question: I mean, Does it think about is it. it doing that while you're paralyzed or <laughs> are you dead? <laughs> it's amazing. And I feel like. Yeah, I, mean, I I do skydiving over that because at least skydiving once you when you land, you know you're landing carefully, you're good, you know you're you're, you're all set. If you're if you're bungee jumping, you you got a higher risk, and I know you got a cord, but learning so much of cord, I can trust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, me personally, I, that, that's things that I really wanted to explore growing up, but I really never have the um, financial figure it out in order for me to like actually go spend the money and I do like the skydiving and get into that. And I, it's always been like, I think about like, I like flying. I like being in the sky and just looking at things uh, like from, from a bird's eye view, if anything. And they just like feeling that air, the, the whole like adrenaline excitement, all that stuff just mix up. Yeah. Like, just like, boom. it's just great. I, I, I love it. I love it. So what would y'all go, what would you guys choose? Bungee jumping or skydiving? If you had to choose. Um, right for me Put personally, right. a hobby or interest I'd like to explore further in the future. Um, if I'm being honest, um, I want to pay. I used to do it a lot when I, when I was younger, and, and you, you know about some of this. Um, I want to get back into doing martial arts, um, but I want to get back into it heavy enough so I can do tournaments if I want, because um, I know I'm a good fighter, but uh, it's one of those things where you know, life hits you and you wait and you get older. So, you know, now I got more bones cracking. I'm not trying to have them crack too much, but um, <laughs> right, I definitely think you, I would, I would do further. You try to you know, join the senior citizens championship for a martial You know anybody then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that'd be crazy. Imagine you try to do a roundhouse kick and out of nowhere, your back just oh, popping. Uh, <laughs> you just cripple to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Well, we haven't even started yet. My back pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine that? <laughs> I mean, I know, they're coming down to the ground and they're doing. <laughs> yeah, like, like you know, because you try to do no. your intro like, like, like a good fighting, like you know, like oh a street fighter game. You try to do the whole like, oh yeah, and then you go through like, and then you be like, hi ah. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh Lord, that is funny. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> Imagine you, 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 you hit the guy, you're like, oh my toes. <laughs> like I know you started practicing it, but my God. Oh Lord. That's so funny. No. Oh. You I have, oh. I have a I have a pop question I have a pop question so uh the, su the subject is what are your girl like your generation's cult classics and uh this is the context of it, it said i was born in 98 i would uh, watch was thinking which movie i consider cult classic napoleon dynamite and the big lebrowski lebowski sorry came to mind since those were movies I'd watch on DVD with our TV and I realized nostalgic plays a part. So which movies do your generation consider cold classics or even classics from your time? Um, I, those were big movies, but... For our time. I wouldn't, our time. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to both. Yeah, those are good movies, but I wouldn't go with those personally. I probably would go with uh, a classic that I know most people in the 80s and 90s have seen and even kids to this day still love. I'd have to go with uh, anything with Robin Williams, like Mrs. Doubtfire, especially uh, Jumanji and Hook. I feel like oh. Hook, everybody knew Hook, everybody loved it because it, it triggered your imagination, made you think of like um, 
more fun times and like oh man i wish i could do that like bro if i could be if i could be in jumanji yeah is it scary because you know the guy's trying to kill you yeah. and you get the animals yeah it can be but i feel like that like just the imagination wise of it like i would love i would i would have loved to have like been in that oh, yeah. like that you mind you you mind you was crazy you yeah you know what i'm saying and crazy. even hook like you got to be peter you know if you got to be one of the lost boys and and be there you know going against hook and just fly bro fly and, and just do everything that they had like not grow up i feel like being, I feel like being adults are raising. No way to grab. It's like no man. If I could stay in age, it'd probably be like in my twenties, because like you know, you have you could do what you want. You know, you're starting life kind of, but you you're still in that like oh, young no. phase. If, you're if, not if, I could, if I could get permanently stuck on an age group, I'll be like eighteen forever. Like if you, you keep, if you if you give me my knowledge, like you give me today's knowledge of of what I accumulated throughout the the, the decades. And I still be eighteen or nineteen ish, bro. I will stay there. I'll stay Back. definitely. I will stay. There. Yeah, I, I but, had but to to me, that. to me, I think. I mean, even though we came from from pretty much the, the, the same era, I think for me, I, I like cult classics is more like the original Ghostbusters. Uh, you know, Ooh, that's a good one. Like Indiana Jones stuff like that. You know, say so like things that we yeah. just like sit down and we like really sit down and be like boom. Like I could sit down and watch that, no, like no problem. Like that'd be crazy. That I do, I do like that. I, yeah, I do agree on that one. That's the origi- <laughs> do you remember watching the original Ninja Turtles on the movie theater? Go Ninja, go Ninja, go, go no. Ninja, go. Oh, bro, yo, bro, uh, such good thing, good times, man. Oh my gosh. Um, let's see here. There's so many questions we could be asking, so many things we could talk about. It's just insane. Um, okay, here we, here we got we got a few things here. Um, how do, because I know you're from Panama and I'm from Puerto Rico, so we have similar things, but very different. And everyone else, you know, we have people who are black, we're going to be watching this, white, you name it. So people, I want to know how, we're going to go with Latino starting off, but in general, this would be for anybody. But how do, and we, we semi talked about this, but we, we didn't really go into like detail, detail to a point. Mm. But, um, how do Latino families celebrate important milestones such as quinceañeras, weddings, and cultural holidays? We semi talked about it with Christmas, but we didn't really go into anything further. Like, um, I, I think most Spanish countries have a quinceañera, but then again, I could be wrong. I don't know every country. I, mean, I know, they, what, no. yeah, they all they all do. I think that's that's one of the like milestones when it comes down to um, Hispanic culture in general. You know, especially for the girls, you know what I'm saying? It's not so much yeah. things for, for, for the boys. Now they try they, 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 the they try they, yeah, they, 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 they try to do that now. Like I seen that that you know, now you have the guys when they turn like fifteen or sixteen and they have something similar to that where they like get like yeah. oh, you got well, I mean, Jewish people have the like, back, like yeah, but like but that's for the Jewish community. Um, but I'm but saying like, though, they, 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 guys should have some, guys are so overlooked, man. They're underlooked, yeah, excuse me. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're yeah underlooked yeah. or overlooked? One of those. You overlooked. Know I mean. Yeah. It's overlooked. Yeah, they, they, just go, they just go over it and they just. Yeah. Play, it's they, like you're 15. Oh, it's whatever. It's like my yeah, sister had a quinceanera. It's like, like you hey, know, boy. Actually, and, and, and I think the whole thing with the quinceanera has to be because, you know, all, 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 everything that has to do where um, their hormonal stuff, you know what I'm saying? They started their periods and so far and so on. So they're like, oh my God, she she bled for the first time. Now she's a woman. Okay, but we 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 dropped our balls. <laughs> we dropped the balls. We we became a man now. We're we're no hey, longer the only thing that happened after that, you, 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 you probably, you, your voice probably got a little bit lower, and then you you sounded like a weird type of cartoon character. Bro, where you, I've where always had a deep voice. Where your voice was like, 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 like yeah, my voice got deep when I got once I hit puberty, bro. I was just, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Waking up, nah, I'm like, really into it. <laughs> oh but that's as, I think that's as much as it goes. Um, I I think for guys, most likely it's probably like where they most pay attention, probably like when they're 18, because most yeah. Hispanic country, uh, uh, Hispanic countries they let you drink at 18, so they will take you out to like, oh, yeah. let's go, you know, your first beer type of thing, let's go to yeah. the bar, and then they'll take you, like your uncles and your dad and stuff like that, they'll take you out to a bar and they have you grab a couple beers or, yeah. you know, like like just go uh, um, to uh, to the strip joint and then watch your first the first show. By the way, first- now that I just said that, I never in my entire life 
being on a strip joint. Never. Really? Never. <laughs> I was offered plenty of times, but honestly, I never really saw anything entertaining off of it. Don't get me wrong. I would love to see a naked woman, but I never really like I I never really was like I had to pay you for you to take your clothes off. I don't know. That never was like in it, it never really like I tried like why do I have to give you money for you to take your clothes off? If I don't have any game to take your clothes off, I don't want no part of that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do a little advisory warning here. Mom, dad <laughs> I was super young. I was curious when I was young. I went to a strip club, I think, twice in my life. Once, my first time was in Baltimore, Maryland. And I don't know, I, I didn't see anything out of it. I was like, yeah, that's whatever. Like, yeah, the girls are beautiful and stuff. But like, I don't know. For me, I feel like if you ain't going to get no play, what's the point of teasing yourself? You feel it's, you, it's not worth it. You're spending money for nothing. If you ain't got that game, then you exactly. ain't going to get game. You, you gonna, you're going to grab $200 and make it into one so you can throw him out there. Like, for yeah, one, you know what I'm saying? Um, my second time was in Hawaii. My friend wants to go. We were celebrating my dude's birthday. He, he never went to strip club, but we went there. And Hawaii, I mean, beautiful women. But um, I, once again, I was like, we went there for a few hours. Honestly, I was there for the drinks and for the food because we heard that good food too. It's Hawaii. So, like, it, I don't know. The, the females, like, it just I didn't care. Oh, no, I went one time with two females, with these two, my, one of my homegirls and her friend. And we went and the girl gave the girl a lot of it. So, I just, I don't know. For me, I don't see anything in the strip club. I find, I feel like it's just pointless, honestly. Yeah. I like, and it's just, it's not a big deal for me. Like, I feel like if you ain't got the game and you got to go do that, I mean, especially with internet nowadays, you don't really need it. Not that I'm recommending. <laughs> it that's, you know, that's that. I just, I feel like it's pointless. I don't know. But what was it? What was the first, how old were you when you had your, your first, like, sip of some type of alcohol? Like, I know for Latino countries, especially like in Puerto Rico, you're not going to be, you know, you know, 18, 18 was like, yeah, you could drink at 18, I, but I like, grew up, I, grew up in a very, the popular I, thing. I grew up in a very Christian conservative household. So same here, same here. I never really had it until actually when I joined Job Corps and I turned 21. Um, actually, I, I sneak a, a, a bottle of uh, um, wild turkey. Oh, God. Yeah, I, yo, when when I tell you that my insides were on fire, <laughs> yo, that was crazy, bro. I had a bottle of wild turkey and I I sneaked it around center yo. and I went behind one of the trailers where where we had our breaks and I pulled it and I just what? and I just took that that to the head, bro. And I was like, I'm dying, but I cannot show. I'm dying. <laughs> What is this? Oh my god, yeah, this is so nasty. This is so painful, bro. I, I was just like, no, that was a bad experience. But you know something? Regardless of that, um, I'm a I'm a I'm a good whiskey person. I, I like whiskeys. Whiskeys are I love delicious. Yeah. yeah. I <clears throat> I think my first drink when it was was because <clears throat> in Puerto Rico, like Christmas is a huge time. And so like, you know. Christmas, as most people know, and if you don't know, we have this thing called Coquito. Coquito oh, yeah. is basically oh, what yeah. Americans call it the, and the, please don't call it this, but this is what it's the best way to explain it to Americans is like the uh, eggnog. Yeah, it's like eggnog. It's like alcoholic eggnog, basically, but it tastes 30 times, 100 times better. Um, so when I was younger, you know, my, my grandmother, because she used to drink beers and stuff, and my grandfather drank, and my whole family would, you know, drink and stuff. So, it was like, you know, my grandfather, every you know, they'd be playing dominoes. I'd be like, I want to taste it. And he's, and my grandfather's like, no, my like, mom, please. And she's like, well, go ahead. She's like, you got to learn Coquito anyway. So she let me have a small taste of Coquito. She's like, that's it. And then that was it. But I think I was like eight years old. And then we had, I remember I had a reunion when I was like 10, 12, something like that. And I know I, I my grandfather had a beer and he was, he was like already buzzed as can be. And, um, God rest his soul. But, uh, my grandfather, he, um, he had a beer and he's he's like he's like Toma. he's like he's like put some hand in your chest. He obviously he said this in Spanish, but he was like Toma Berto. and he gave me a, a sip and I had like a more than a sip. And then my mom caught me. She saw yeah. she said, Let me give him that. And he got a little trouble, but you know, it's her dad and she under you know, she she knows kinda of like a kinda of like a male bonding thing. So it was, you know, I had that yeah, and then a, I was Yeah, just, and that and that's I think that's that's the thing that that's basically our like 
a rite of passage. If anything, you know what I'm saying? You get the, your your male your male figure, you know, your grandpa, your uncle, your dad, you know, whatever you guys have as a male figure if you ever had growing up. You know, they they were the ones who was gonna take you out and like go and make you have you have your drink, your first ring. Now kids nowadays they just sneak around with the best buddies and they just yeah, you know, say like they're 16 and they're already drinking all this hard liquor. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I feel like I would have yeah, never thought of that. Like, I would have never crossed my mind like to drink like that. I'm like, yo, if I get caught drinking this thing right now, and I'm like really yeah. underage, bro, somebody go. Well, no, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying, bro. I just, it just, I just pop in my head. The first time I actually drank, I was in high school. I think I was 16, and I was with my friends at the time. Uh, his name is Ishmael and Emmanuel, bro, bro. My mom was dating this guy right here, and uh, he had. You know the 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 liquor cabinet, but he had a lot of like vodkas and all this like uh, uh, um, white liquor, and those are the dangerous cool. ones. That's when I realized white yeah. liquor is, is is not for me. So we created we we started mixing all this kind of crazy stuff, and then to make matters worse, we try to fill them up back to where they were with water. So we were mixing the liquor with water, so Ooh. it can <laughs> so it can look like you whatever. We got busted. That's horrible. But bro, we were mixing like vodka with milk and all this other crazy stuff. <laughs> I mean, there's, yeah. there's that. I mean, I, we, we, yeah, we, we didn't, we didn't know, we didn't know anything about liquor, to be honest with you. So we started just grabbing stuff and just mixing it together. Bro, we got so wasted. My, like our moms knew each other, and they and they called my mom because they they knew that they were at my at my at my house, <clears throat> and. When my mom got home and she started calling our names or whatever, not you know, according to what she told me, she went and then we were just like passed out on the couch. That's passed <laughs> out on the couch. Ma, if you watch this, we were young and stupid, so <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't, th I don't think, I don't think she realized that we were drinking, but yeah, that that was my actual first time. And then when I went to job for it, I was like. My over, you know, over the age, you know, like official, official drink kind of thing. Yeah. That's funny. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> when was the first time that you, because you smoked before, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, were, yeah. Were there cigarettes? Okay. Have you, have you ever had cigarettes? And if you did, what was the age you had them at? Disgusting. Um, I, I only smoked cigarettes once. Once. And it was horrible. Um, but I did change it. I think, I think I was like 19 when I really like first tried to grab a cigarette and it was disgusting. And then somebody introduced me to, um, the, the cloves, the black, the, the black cigarettes, the clove cigarettes. We used to have those in job court. I remember that. I, bro, I, I was, I was literally, I was hooked on those. I was hooked on those clove cigarettes. Um, but then after a while, you know, I, I transitioned into like. Uh, a weed and stuff like that. And I smoke weed. I, I stopped smoking weed when my daughter was born because I said, you know, like whatever, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a family guy now, you know, kind of like my whole mentality yeah. kind of switch at that point in time is that, like, you know, I got to stop, you know? And so after that, I, I kind of stopped. And then um, a few years ago, actually, uh, I would say like a little bit after the, the whole, like the, the heart of the pandemic, I started like with the with the vapes and stuff like that because it was so stressful that I really like either I pick up drinking, which I really didn't want to do because I don't want to stay drinking twenty four seven. Even yeah. though I love my drinks, you know, I don't want to make it a habit. So I started yeah. using the vapes and stuff like that. So I'm like, hey, guess that's a that's a good substitute, you know. Saying you just you don't have as much nicotine as a regular cigarette, so it, you know, yeah. you kind of just kind of like east out some of uh, like the stress levels in my head or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I know my first cigarette, it, this is going to be disgusting. And mom, dad, I love you. <laughs> I love you. I remember one time my dad used to be an avid smoker. Um, maybe a pack a day, I would say. Maybe. Half a pack to a pack a day. You um, or your dad? I, my dad. Okay. okay. And um, 
this is this is when I was younger, and he smoked. He smoked. He used to smoke all the time. You know, smoking was considered normal back in the day, especially with stress and stuff. And I remember we were in Philadelphia visiting my wet on stuff, and my dad was smoking, and we we're getting ready to go inside. And then I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna stay outside and play. And so my dad had like maybe a few inches left, enough to smoke of the cigarette, mm, and the butt of the cigarette. He, yeah, and he he threw it on the floor, or whatever. And I was curious. I was like, I wonder. What, I'm like, I wonder how. Like, why does Dad smoke this? So, mind you, I'm like eight, nine at the time, eight, nine, ten, something like that. I was curious, so I went to the floor, grabbed it, and I took a puff, and I started coughing. I was like, Oh nope, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> and then, never again. And then, um, when I got older, I'd probably say sixteen. I was chilling with a, a bunch of friends and stuff. We, you know, we were we had our our um, we were in school and we had one of like our breaks, like one hour, like br- empty period where we could do whatever we wanted. Yeah. And so my friend was smoking a cigarette. I was like, bro, I, like I was stressed. And I was just like, uh, I was like, you know what? I, I, I want to try one. So I, he's like, my, my dude was like, he's like, nah, you're good. He's like, your mom's going to kill you, bro. If she finds out and I'm not trying to get in trouble myself. So I was like, bro, I'm like, I'm not going to ask you again either that. I'm going to go buy, figure out someone to buy a pack and get it. He's like, here. So they gave me a cigarette. And then I, I, every, I only did that like every now and then. It's once I got like older. Once I hit like, I don't know, 20, 21, when I actually picked up smoking, I was smoking for a few years, smoking cigarettes for a few years, but then like my first time smoking weed was when I was, I want to say 15, maybe even younger, honestly, I'd probably say about 14, 14, 15, my, my dude was smoking and that's when he died. He's like, no, I'm not giving it to you. I'm like, bro, you're either going to get it. I'm going to go. I got money because I was working. You know, I was, you know, like, I, said, no, that, that, I was working at McDonald's for the, you know, to, to pay my, my mom and also because I was homeschooled. So I was like, I'll buy it myself if I have to. I'm like, I'll figure it out. He's like, all right, fine. He's like, just, he's like, we're going to have to make sure we're good. We're clear. He wasn't supposed to smoke either, but he, you know, he knew my parents, my mom and dad um, were like super strict. Yeah. I mean, like super. Yeah. So he's like, fine, but we got to make sure we're good. So we smoked. And um, yeah, that was, that was crazy. We smoked. And after that, it was decently often. It was probably a few times a week we smoked. Oh, As I got older and stuff, um, and I moved on my own and did my own stuff, I smoked every now and then. More to like just calm down, relax. You know, if I, after I got out of work and stuff, I you know, get myself a little blunt or a little bowl and you know smoke a little bit. And then, you know, that that's when I started smoking. Then you know, after that, I became an avid uh, pothead. And you know, I haven't done it in a while, um, but it's like it's something I, I did. I did pretty often. I actually don't. I don't disagree with smoking weed. I think it could be good if you're productive with it i feel like people get lazy i know there's a huge thing um i got my i got my marijuana um certificate here in seattle so i can actually work at a, as a butt tender i got certified in that um i've seen nothing but good things come from uh marijuana personally um and obviously as you've seen the studies and stuff many people have seen there hasn't been <clears throat> at least not to my knowledge there hasn't been any deaths with marijuana and anything it's not gateway like people some people say people some people take it too re- too much. It's like, okay, well, you have coffee, and that's worse. Alcohol. Yeah, I mean, I was just very watching from the government, to be honest with you, because um, I mean, I was, I, I used to smoke weed as well, so I never really picked up cocaine, LSD, angel dust, none of that crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? It was, yep. that, that that kind of stuff was never really attracted or even like crossed my mind for a split second to like, oh, let me try this other stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, and so like that for me was like, you know, that was. I was when I was there. and then of course as I got older, I was like, yeah, you know, I like I like smoking weed. So you know, every now and then I'll smoke if I if I feel like it. But like usually, I always make sure I'm in the house. You know, I do what I do. And obviously, I've done I've you know smoked out of an apple. You know, different. I smoked out of a lot of different ways. There's a few times I thought I was gonna get caught and I never did. But uh, my grandmother almost caught me once when I was 17. I was looking at my boys like, bro, we got nothing to smoke out of. And we like back in the day, we were we were crazy when you came to smell like i remember taking a pen you take a pen and then you take like one of the pens that had like uh you take the the little filter of the ink yeah. inside you take that out and then it had a little metal cap so you flip it around burn it and it melted to it and then you put the weed in the other end and smoke it so we came up with some crazy shit i learned some stuff bro and then like so that's when i first smoked but that's yeah that's you know that's when i did that but uh yeah i i stopped that for quite a few years and then once I moved to uh, other states, and then probably not to like 24, 25 is when I started. Um, actually, once I got the job board. <laughs> That's when, like, after I, I smoked every now and then there, and then usually after. I didn't really smoke much on job boards, and I was trying to do my thing, but after that, probably when I smoked. certificate, sir. They're going to revoke your certificate. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of life. You know, you grow, you, you learn, and 
it's I, I personally think it's all about um true 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 what do you call it? like uh what do you call it it's all about like uh not quantity but like how much it's what do you call it? i remember the word but it's like when you um when you learn to not do something too much like not to overdo it kind of thing yeah um i can't yeah, remember the word you, for it, but like, you, um you regulate yourself you know what i'm saying to, yeah you know so like I, that's that's how i am i've been i've always been good with that it's never been an issue for me but yeah that's when i you know that's that's when i first did it but um speaking on schooling and stuff i feel like um how do you feel like latinos in general um how do you say it? like are being supported in in the education system then and compared to now but what are you what do you think are the barriers that Latinos face in accessing um, like quality education. Well, then and now compare like let's compare then compared to now. Well, I I, I mean to be honest, it's gonna be kind of like a disconnect in my side of the world because I my whole education um, before Job Corps when I came here to just add to my education, um, I I was basically school all the way through in Panama. So the level of education was different, you know. Um, there was a lot of similarities because, you, uh, you know, you had to read books, you had to get stuff out of the library, you know, you actually had to do the legwork in order for you to actually yeah. learn something. So I think that you at, at that point, you actually sit down and learn. Now everything is just at your fingerprints. Like, you know, I, I got this. So people just kind of get lazy and then like, yeah, like now everything is like AI this, AI that, AI this. Yeah, so people be like, like they they create their own like book reports using AI now, so they don't gotta sit down and write, uh, uh, write um, you know, like I, like sixteen pages of a book report because they don't have the time because they gotta concentrate on partying. You know, what I'm saying like for us growing yeah. up, it, it was it was different. And since I was growing in a, in a Hispanic culture, you know, everything was Hispanic based. So it's not like oh whites, blacks, and and Hispanics or or something like that. It was just pretty much like everybody's Hispanic. We just got different yeah. skin shade, you know, skin tones, but we were all Hispanics here. Um, uh, I was not able to um, experience too much of that because yeah. uh, coming to Florida, especially to the Miami area, I mean it's predominant Latino, so it it, it was kind of like the same vibe how do you think education is now for like for kids now for like latinos right now do you think it's it sucks, it sucks because it's so limited by all these overbearing parents like i don't want to i don't want to teach my kids this and i don't want my kids to learn this but at the same time you got to understand knowledge is still knowledge whether you like it or not uh or yeah. like, kids shouldn't learn this yes there, there should be some type of uh, guardrails with some of the things, and the only reason why I say that is because some of the stuff that you're that you're fighting with the school system about them teaching them, you should already have taught your kids from yeah. home. They should have yep. taught the kids from home, like, hey, this is this, this is that, this is the other, and I'm gonna tell you this. This is factual. You can go ahead and search, uh, and search it yourself so you can educate yourself. This is yeah. this, this is that, this is the other. So if you see this outside of this household, which is normal outside of, you know, outside of these four walls where I'm educating you of things that are going out there, then I don't think we should, we, we would have as many problems and as many, uh, uh, um, uh, what you call it, uh, like controversies when it comes down to some of the subjects that, some yeah. schools are doing like all this all like burning books. Oh, they teaching kids and they grooming kids about sexuality. This, but if you would have take the time to teach your kids about sexuality from home, I don't think it would have been that big of a deal because I already, he already would have the knowledge or, or or at least the basics to to yeah. if he yeah. if he hears something, he will come back to you and then you can redirect what is going on with actual facts and not with just. Yeah. Your, like your biased opinion about some stuff or whatever. And you, like, yeah. I, think, I think education Agreed. should be straight facts, just factual. Which, not, which is crazy because like schooling back to, then. Yeah, when you try to make your own twist into, into, into facts and you try to put your own personal spin into things, you kind of take it into another level that is like, okay, now I'm seeing this because my dad or my mom or my auntie told me this, but like the actual facts, just teach the actual facts. Yeah, your kids people, are more able to, to discern what's truth from, from Exactly, exactly. From yeah. and, and, and that's why we have so much problems now because everybody's so easily brainwashed with, with ideologies and stuff like that, um, especially now with all this gender 
uh, um, things going on here, there, whatever. I, I, you know, I'm a it, not a they, and, and I'm a this, and not a that, and all this stuff. It's just a lot of confusion, and then a lot, a lot of people when they brought, they bring those subjects to the people that is actually advocating for those things, they never have an answer. They never have a yeah. a factual answer to give back, and then they start just calling you, oh, you are just xenophobic and homophobic and this phobic and that phobic and all the phobics in the world because you don't have the actual answers to the question they're asking. Because if you did, yeah. it would be as easy as like, okay, so how two plus two equals four and, and three plus one equals four. So how can you explain that? Because they're different numbers. They're equal to the same thing. They cannot give you a basic structure, uh, a factual thing, to give you an answer to they everybody's based on what they feel i feel this i feel that and i feel the other feelings are not facts yeah facts i agree i agree so me personally like i grew up here with my, my grandfather and my mother and my father we spoke two languages now so i they my dad back in the day had a thick accent so he was born here but raised in puerto rico and he came here on a baseball scholarship my dude was my dad i love my dad he, he came here for baseball and he was ready to make it until he hurt his arm. And back in the day, because, med, you know, I think he, it was called uh, a, varicose vein, a varicose vein. Uh, because of that, I think, if I remember correctly, and, and I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I remember the start to the T, was um, back in the day, they didn't have the greatest medical procedures. So they said, if you keep playing, because he was a pitcher and he was, I mean, he came, he got here on a scholarship. He was that yeah. good. He, had, he was ready to play for professionals and stuff. And um, like, you know, you're, it's going to either explode and you're going to lose your arm and you could possibly die or you, we can, you know, or if you keep playing um, or we can, you know, basically get rid of your arm. And he's like, but, or if you just completely stop, you're good. He's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not losing my arm. So then he stopped baseball. He went to the military, which he loves. And, you know, um, shout out to all the veterans. My, my dad was in there for 40 something years. He did his time. He was an amazing guy. And he, I, I look up to my dad in every way possible. Um, even with a crazy, shit I've done. My dad still was there. And even with the things that, you know, some things I, I disagree with to this day, but other than that, like, you know, my dad raised me to be a man. He raised me to be a man to understand what I need to do. And he's the softest, gentlest guy in the world. Um, he's just, he's amazing. But like, um, I grew up, you know, cause he didn't really know English like that. So to him, we would speak English and we would actually teach him. Like, I remember like, he was like, Oh, how do you say this? And I know like, dad, it's like this. And I would teach him in English. And then my grandfather and mother, when we weren't talking to my dad, we would speak to them in Spanish. And my, I remember my grandfather, my, God, so, my grandfather, he was teaching me Spanish and we're doing like the alphabet and some other stuff when I was younger. And, um, I remember he had got mad at me and I was giving an attitude and obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid, you know, I want to have fun and stuff, but he would sit me down for like an hour or two and make sure I, I learned stuff. But I remember one time he got pissed, and I'm telling you, this, this, I feel like this is a Latino thing only, because there's that whole running joke that we all know of, like, you know, if you piss off your parents, there's going to be the chancla, and you can run, I don't care where you run. Yeah, I, it's going to get, gonna get I'm you. Telling y'all, it's going to get I'm you. I'm telling y'all, I, I'm telling y'all, y'all don't understand. Latin moms are like... Sharp Sharpshooters, sharp man. Like, bro, I remember. They don't. I was, in, I was doing something. My mom got mad, and I ran. I'm literally down the hall, down the hall, ran in the room, and I'm like, she's not catching me. But I saw that she threw the chunk. I'm like, it's not gonna hit me. I don't know how. To this day, I've talked about this. <laughs> I don't know how. I'm in the room, bro. How did the chancleta go down the hall, turn and hit me, bro? It's not a boomerang. But she got me, and I just went boof. <laughs> I was like, "Dang!" I'm like, "Come on!" And then my grandfather. Bro, I don't know. I never, I, I never really thing. experienced a chancleta, um, bro. because Ooh. because in my family it, it was like we are Hispanic, but at the same time we were mixed with Caribbean culture, and they was always with like the bamboo stick and the belts. And and the switches bro, and stuff like that, la bro. Correa. Bro, I mean, I'm encantado la correa, bro. Tell me why my grandfather. So when he when we were doing the Spanish thing, I ran under the bed thinking he's not gonna get under. You know, I'm smaller. He's big, dude. He's not gonna get me. He had a belt and he was gonna. He said, like, "You better sit down." I'm a Spanish. And I, mind you, this is all in Spanish. My grandfather didn't really know English at the time. Or he didn't really know English even to now. Like he spoke enough, but it was very broken. And so he he took the belt. I could hear the snap. And then I head on the bed thinking, oh, he's not going to find me. This dude swung it like, <laughs> under the right, 
And then, bro, tell me why that belt went straight and then it curved under the bed, hit me right <laughs> in my lip, bro. In my lip. I was like, bro, I was crying. I was like, bro. And of course, they don't use these little, you know, nice, nice, bro. It was a leather belt, bro. Oh, yeah. Uh, a leather those, belt. Those ones that in the back, you see the little, the little pelitos sticking out, or whatever. You like know that, what I'm saying? That, that real right. good cow leather that, that, that will make you itch on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my gosh! But yeah, it, 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 crazy. Education was, then was very, especially for minorities in general, but especially for Latinos. When I was in high school, they said I used to skip a lot, and I didn't graduate from high school and get to go to graduation, which I always regret it. I got my high school diploma anyways. I got a high school diploma and a GED. Um, I got the GED first, and then I, I felt so incomplete for me. And I know it's like, oh, you have a GED as, as long as you're doing something in the future it doesn't matter. But I always, it always bothered me. Um, it was always ingrained to have your high school diploma. GED is good, but high school diploma makes such a huge difference, especially back in the day. In the day, if you didn't have a GED or high, if you didn't have a high school diploma, yeah. you're kind of considered like a loser. And if you had a GED, it was good, but like it wasn't a high school diploma. So it always bothered me. So I got my high school diploma uh, late in life when I was like in my 20s. I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to pay for school. And I'm going to do it. And, and I got my high school diploma. So I have both. I have high school diploma and a GED. Um, but it was one of those where, like, education since the back of the day, if you were Hispanic you, or minority in general, but especially Latino, yeah. um, I had a teacher who I had a he was a, a counselor and he said, Oh, he was skipping. He did this. And I'm like, No, I did. I told my mom to this day, I'm like, I'm telling you, te lo juro en todo. Okay? I never, I didn't skip that. They said I skipped like basically half the school year. I'm like, I know I didn't. I know I didn't because I actually enjoyed my classes. It's just every now and then I'd, I'd skip, you know, my, my, my study period or a class every now and then that I already knew I was doing good in because I was, I'm, I'm a smart dude. So like I was getting bored on some of the stuff. So I, you know, I was whatever. And so I'd go out and smoke. <laughs> and it was one of those things I was like, eh, you know, but education, they, I know I had a few guys who I knew that had straight A's and they got screwed on some stuff and they were able to make it. But like they got, it was education system now, they, they you know, they're trying to be very inclusive of people. Like we said in the last, one of the other episodes about like, um, Oregon is no longer requiring for graduation that you have to read, write, and math, which is ridiculous. I feel like they're trying to make sure, oh, you know, because they're trying to help um, minorities in general and not have to be held back or stuff. But in reality, it's more it's more hurting people than it is yeah. doing well. And it, yeah. I feel like for Latinos, it's very like, oh, well, if you're here, are you here legally? And like, I know, like during the whole like Hurricane Maria thing, it was um, people didn't know, like 52% of people, 58% of people didn't know that. Puerto Ricans were U.S. citizens. And so I was like, the education system here is really bad. And it's worse if you're Latino. And if you're not in a good neighborhood, you're not going to be in a good school normally. And that's yeah, and, unfortunate. But I, and, and I think that, that goes to more like Hispanic culture uh, in their own countries. That they're, because I, I, I can guarantee you, and I I might be wrong, but I, I really don't think I am. Um, people that come outside of the U.S. into the U.S., are more knowledgeable around the world, uh, things of the world, and the U.S. that that citizens that was born and raised here, and that right. right there it just blows my mind to believe that that you live here and you have everything at your disposal and you was the greatest country in the world. Yet there's people that come from the outside, immigrants, and and they try to create this whole new living style but they are more knowledgeable when it comes down to things mm -hmm. that you as born and raised american citizens and and that to me is just yeah. is just beyond me is that, that that thing is crazy crazy beyond crazy. Well, it's like we talked about before back in the i don't remember if it was in a, on one of the episodes or if it was just me and you but we we're talking about how like to become a citizen, you have to learn all these crazy things. Yeah. But if you ask a U.S. But they, I remember I saw a video about this once. Some guy was asking. Yeah, I, like, don't think, do you I don't think they'll pass. I don't think they'll pass those those tests that they need to, oh, yeah, they to get they their would. citizenship. Yeah, well, I don't think they would have passed. I don't, I, I I don't, I, don't I, know. I, I think well, the great majority would have. Like, there was a guy, he asked people, hey, could you pass the test? And like, oh, yeah. And he asked the questions that were on there and people had no clue. Like most, and, and that's the sad part. That's where. People, you know, who are not here, who want to come here and, and live a better dream or a better yeah. life, they learn everything that they're supposed to because the U.S. says, if you want to do it, you have to learn this. And the people here, they say they have this education system, but then they don't learn it and they don't know half the stuff. Yeah. So many people don't know any of that stuff. But, yeah, that's that's where I feel like being a minority in general, but especially Latino, um, but minority in general, we do have a – doesn't mean we can't learn and do the best, but it, it's hard. it's a harder opportunity 
when you live where you live and when you grow up how you grow up being of uh, a different culture that's not american having to deal with racism and things like that so education system is you know they never wanted us to learn and you know in puerto rico now they've shut majority of schools i think there's a ha- literally i can count on my fingers a handful of schools that are open college and kids and if you saw and recently it's been popping up on my thing like the conditions of the school toilets broken water broken like just all this stuff and this is just puerto rico alone not even including other places so yeah it's, you, people the realize, infrastructure of, of the school system is just poor yeah it is poor. It's, it's, people don't understand education is so important but when we're not given the opportunity you can't expect someone to do really well when the opportunity you're afforded is to make sure you fail. So it's just it's unfortunate. And, that's, and I think that that's that's the main thing why people try to Im, like immigrate to the United States because they have this this um, painted uh, uh, um, dream that you know once you get over here is going to be the best thing. But you know when they come and wake up and smell the the asphalt is just crazy because it's. Yep. Pretty much, it, it, it's kind of like the same thing. It's, it, it, the school system is so crazy. It's like kids don't have a free meal. Like literally, there was kids that will miss lunch or breakfast because the parents owe like three dollars on their lunch stuff or whatever. Yep. And when, when I when I started reading into that and, and looking into that, it's just crazy. Like, are you really gonna stop that kid from eating a meal because he owes five dollars? Why is not yep. the food in schools for free? If you and, were, and the food is not healthy either. And the food is not healthy in any way. Like I've seen, once again, on TikToks, they compare food like lunchtime in the U.S. and lunchtime in other countries. In other countries, they make sure not only is there, like Japan, for example, they have a full, huge meal. It's all included. And it's always healthy stuff. Like they even have lobster there. But our U.S. system said, oh, we'll give them prepackaged, you know, prepared stuff that's not even healthy. And then they wonder why kids are tired in school is because here – yeah, teacher, the, like the, we said, the, teacher, the obesity are overworked. And, and all these health problems that develop because of, of, of yeah. all the food stuff. It's like, when was the last time? Like, I remember growing up, like, we had breakfast growing up in elementary and middle school and stuff like that. Like, we would go to the cafeteria and we have home cooked meals for breakfast and lunch. And then for those, yep. because in Panama, it was two shifts. It was the morning shift that would go to school from six o'clock in the morning till noon. And then the, the evening shift that was from noon to six o'clock in the afternoon. Yep. Um, Facts. And you will have meals prepared by cooks in the in the cafeteria. And that was f- like hot food that you have your rice, your beans, your salad, the this, that, and the third, yep. your, your drinks, water, whatever. And it was no charge here. You got like, Oh, this is a vending machine. So you got to spend money to buy this and to spend money to buy that. And if you don't have no money, then you literally will see people sitting in the cafeteria at lunchtime that has nothing to eat because they need to spend some type of money. And to me, yep. that is beyond crazy. That and it's not fair know. because it's like if you don't have the money, and what if your home life is not, especially if you live in a hood? Exactly. That might be that might be the only meal that you have, or the only good meal you have. And if you can't afford it, you're screwed. It's like, when is it that we stop giving a care about kids? You know, like if if we care about it, we should be able to have it. But it it doesn't. It's unfortunate, but um, you know, that's that's more for discussion. But uh, you know, that's unfortunate about you know the education system. It definitely needs to be worked on. But yeah. So, uh, we're so definitely done here. for those that are, are watching us, like, what are your thoughts when it comes down to yeah. uh, these things that we talk about today? Like, leave it, leave it in the comments. Um, let us know what you think. Let, let put your thoughts on there. Uh, yeah. We want to, we want to see what you're thinking. Is you, we agree to some things? You disagree as well. You know, let us know why you disagree to some of the stuff yes. that we said. Um, right. You know, we we, we want to know everything and everything from all walks of life because you know, I, the more we understand each other. Uh, I think, you know, uh, the more we learn from each other, the yep. it, 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 we can work to get like a solution. I know it, it's kind of like a, a fight uphill because, you know, we also got to deal with the government and, and all the corruption and all the, you know, bias and racism that is in the government towards, you know, um, uh, blacks and, and Latinos and, and Asians and, and, and uh, um, you know, uh, uh you know, people from the Middle East and all this sort of stuff. It, it's just crazy. I mean, like this this country right now is in such a disarray. It's just crazy. But we, we, yeah. we want to know because we want to get to know you. You are part of our family. So any thoughts, uh, any comments, you know, be appreciated. We'll read, sit down and read them. Uh, we can even start a, a whole um, 
uh, episode, you know, I'll, based on your comments and, and thoughts. Yep. And so, so we can go ahead and, and also like break it down and, and get to know each other even more. Agreed. Agreed. So that's it for the Latinos on Filter podcast, y'all. We hope you enjoyed our uh, our conversations, our laughing, our our opinions, some things that were facts, um, our unfiltered conversations. Hope you guys laughed a lot and laughed with us. Hope you guys agree with us. If you didn't, hey, tell us why you didn't agree with us. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone's entitled to it. Yeah. So hopefully, you learned something new. Yeah, you got to remember, guys. You know, and and it's good because uh, that we get into this kind of conversation because life is too short and we need to have a good time and we need to learn from one another. So, you know, until we meet the next time, you got to make sure that we got to keep on vibing and you got to stay curious and stay, it's a, keep your eyes open, stay curious, keep learning, you right. know what I'm saying? And keep those cafecitos, your drinks, your food, you know, keep them ready, bro, because we're going to keep here so, so you can munch and drink while you watch us. Correct, correct. And if you guys haven't, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn on the notifications so you that you guys don't ever miss an episode so you guys can see what we're talking about uh, from things in the past, from things that are up to date for the future, things that are currently present. Uh, make sure you turn those notifications on so you don't miss these episodes because we're looking forward to growing and having you guys as part of our family. Uh, we're here to keep it real. We want you to keep it real with us, you know, whether it's negative comments or not. Every comment is a good comment. So feel free to write that and let us know. So once.